Hello, and welcome to another video. Recently, I switched much of my production machines to Fedora, as I'm very impressed with Release 36. Meanwhile, I've been following the Silverblue team's efforts and their idea of an atomic or immutable operating system, with a Git-like OS tree commit and download paradigm and layering over the official images. I really like these concepts since they promise added speed, security, stability, and easy rollbacks. So let's take the plunge together and set up a complete Silverblue 36 machine with three guiding principles I will explain and demonstrate. I've already downloaded the latest ISO for Fedora Silverblue under the Emerging Fedora Editions website section. So let's boot a KVM and get started. I've already tested this media, so I won't do this again. We'll go straight to the install uh, boot menu option. And again, this is Fedora 36 Silverblue, so it goes right into the Anaconda installer. It's not a live media. So English and English United States work for me. Keyboard is correct. Uh, the language support is correct. And it auto detected my time zone, Los Angeles time zone, West Coast, United States. We'll do the uh, default installation uh, configuration. Um, it's detected the uh, target disk correctly. We'll stick with the automatic storage configuration and we won't encrypt my data today keep this ready long video as short as possible. Okay, we can go ahead and begin the installation. It'll pull the uh, official image from the uh, Fedora servers and do all the configurations and complete the installation. It's done, so let's reboot. And uh, here we go. So the first boot gives you the uh, setup program. So the usual, welcome to Fedora Linux 36. We'll uh, turn off location services for a little added privacy. We'll enable third-party repositories. They include popular apps such as Google Chrome, Steam. Also NVIDIA drivers are in there, uh, non-free drivers. So definitely a good idea to keep those uh, included. We'll skip the online accounts since I don't have any to show you today and create the uh, Stevens uh, user account. I'll enter my password once and twice. Okay, click next and we'll start using Fedora Linux. So it'll give you the GNOME 42 tour. We've all seen this, I presume, more than once. So let's skip that and go straight to the settings. These are, this is the standard GNOME settings app. I'm going to, to uh, save my retinas today, uh, switch to dark mode under appearance. And uh, under sharing, what I like to do, so I've got the uh, uh, DHCP configured properly, Silverblue36 is the computer name. I like to add, uh, or enable rather, the secure shell remote uh, shell daemon. So we can secure shell into the system should we need to fix anything remotely. Always a good idea to have that turned on if you need it. Screen blanker will turn off since this is a demonstration. Uh, the displays, yes, bl big blurry fonts. Let's fix the screen resolution to 1920 by 1080. That makes the fonts crisper, but a lot smaller. So let's fix that and allow you guys hopefully to see better. I'll turn on large text under the accessibility section. That's a lot better. So here we have the about uh, screen. So Silverblue 36 is the device name, we're running 36.1.5 Silverblue. And we're on a KVM virtual machine, Linux kernel virtual machine, very nice. So let's uh, launch the terminal here. First things first, let me um, create a new quick profile for myself for the terminal. We'll name this profile Steven. I like to turn off the terminal bell and go to scrolling and uh, turn off the scroll bar and turn off and unlimit the scroll back uh, lines. And uh, looks like uh, 
got this configured, at least the basics for terminal. Moving right along, uh, let me discuss the three guiding principles here. Nano three principles.txt. Oh, I have an extra I in principles. That's okay. Please forgive me. <laughs> That's not typing too well today. So for not built-in software, the first guiding principle or suggestion is first try uh, flat packs from flathub.org. Um, and if you can't find what you need from flathub.org, uh, and uh, you need uh, something like a rarely used utility, which you only use once or twice, or you'd like to set up a development workstation or a development tool set, uh, you have the built-in toolbox container management uh, system in Silverblue available to you. And for all applications not falling under one or two, the third suggestion or guiding principle is for needed system tools, not available every, anywhere else, um, you can uh, overlay RPM packages using RPM-OS tree. So those are called package layers and uh, you definitely want to minimize as much as possible the package layering that you do uh, for best results in upgrades, rebasing uh, to a different major version, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, those are the three guiding principles that I will use uh, for today's video and setting up Silverblue. All right, so um, let's take a look at the root file system. As you can see, we have a whole bunch of standard uh, directories under root that are actually symlinks to slash uh, usr and slash var. The slash usr are immutable or read-only and slash var are uh, configurables and Etsy uh, that are read-write that you can change to reconfigure the system. Here, let me demonstrate uh, with mount and we pipe it to grep usr, as you can see, so I just stated, uh, USR is monitor read only. Th therein, all the immutable or atomic parts of the system are stored. Uh, if I do mount pipe grep var, you can see all the directories under var uh, are read write. And uh, so those are modifiable by you without having to do layering. And uh, so uh, all, it, along with Etsy, um, you can modify the system because Etsy is also uh, read-write. So let's do an rpm-os tree upgrade dash dash check and see what kind of available patches or updates are available. That was redundant. Um, so we currently have an available update of version uh, dated May 27th, it proposes 299 package upgrades, one removal, and three added packages. So um, that looks good to me. I think before we continue, we should upgrade the system. So let's do an RPM-OS tree upgrade. So what that does is it um, uh, downloads and installs everything. Um, and uh, uh, sets up a new deployment uh, for your OS tree uh, image. So we'll see that momentarily how that works. So we must uh, reboot the system. The thing is with setting up uh, Fedora Silverblue is you have to constantly uh, reboot many times until you have it just right. But the good news is you only need to do this once. Once you have it set up, you don't have to reboot unless you need to. So I switched to Xorg uh, because I want to use OBS uh, key shortcuts or keyboard shortcuts. Um, and Wayland is, no, is not yet compatible with that. So I'm just sticking with Xorg today. So um, let's check and see what we're not running now. So running 5.17.9 kernel dated May 18th. So that's the latest kernel, yeah, post uh, update. 
Let's check the uh, file system table here with um, cat at cfs tab. So you've got a standard file system table for Fedora 36 defaults with the added mount point of slash var. And again, this mount point is for the non-immutable parts of the system, which you can modify. So let's check the OS release file. So we're currently running, um, again, this version, May 27th, which is today, when I made this video. And uh, let's uh, do an RPM dash OS tree status and check our current deployments. So the current deployment, which is this dot marked with a dot here, is um, this version. And we also have the old as installed deployment. The pre-upgrade deployment is still there. Um, so let's say this upgrade, something went wrong with this upgrade, right? So what do we do? Well, um, what, one of the great things about Superblue is you can do easy rollbacks. It's pre-configured, so all you'd have to do is rpm os tree rollback. And hit return. So it moves the original to the first deployment and switches them around. Um, so it just undoes all the package upgrades by downgrading them again. And it asks for another reboot. Get used to this with Silverblue. You need to do a lot of reboots. Uh, please bear with me. Uh, this is just for the initial setup. So let's log in again. And uh, I think we're on an X11 session already. So um, let's open up a terminal. Make the font size a little bigger. Full screen. And let's check the kernel version. And we're back down to 5.17.5, which is from April 28th, uh, a few weeks ago. So we're rolled back. It's working perfectly fine, as if nothing ever happened. Let's check the uh, release file, os-release. So we're back to 36.1.5, which is the ISO that we downloaded earlier and booted from and installed from. OK, that was pretty easy. So let's do an RPM OS tree status and check our deployments. So the one marked with the dot is the active deployment. Again, it's from uh, the ISO was made May 4th, or the image was made May 4th. And we've got our upgraded uh, deployment sitting down here, uh, ready to go, should we ever need to uh, switch back to it. In fact, um, let me clear the terminal here. Um, Suppose we made a mistake with this rollback. Well, we don't have to worry. We just roll back again. We'll just do an RPM dash OS tree rollback. And we hit return. So that moves the uh, new one back to the active uh, deployment and undoes the last changes, the last rollback that we did. So we'll do another reboot. It's an immutable system, so every time you change the image, you have to reboot. Because otherwise everything is stuck in RAM and all kinds of craziness ensues if you don't do that. So, all right, we're logged in. Fortunately, this is a fast kernel virtual machine, so everything happens quickly. And I appreciate you guys' patience while we constantly reboot here. But no pain, no gain, right, with Silver Blue. So let me open up the terminal here. So we want to um, check to make sure that we're at the latest kernel again, and we're back to the May 18th uh, version of it. So yeah, so we're back to a patched, fully patched, upgraded state. Let's do an RPM OS tree status. As you can see, the one marked with the dot, the deployment is dated May 27th, that is today. And the as installed is still there. We can always roll back to it again if you wanted to. Don't worry, I won't today. <laughs> I'll drive you guys crazy if I do. Okay. But really simple, stable, and easy to roll back the system. So um, we can check uh, what 
deployments are available remotely with OS3 Remote, Refs, Fedora, and Pipe It 2 will grep for Silverblue. So you can see we've got version 36, Rawhide, version 35 of Fedora, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29. So a whole bunch of um, deployments options you can do to roll to. So that's pretty cool. Um, we won't go into that today. Um, okay, so uh, let me open up Firefox, which is included in the default install of uh, Silverblue. You can use layers or flat hub packages for other browsers um, if you so wish. Just about every browser is available to you using the uh, three guiding principles I mentioned earlier. Okay, so let's go, speaking of flat packs, let's go to flatpack.org uh, slash setup slash Fedora. So here's our Fedora quick setup. We're on Silverblue, so I found it's best just to do this menu with copy paste, uh, the flat pack remote add command. And it asks for the password to authenticate. And we're done. So now flat packs are available to us, which should be our primary source of software for our silver blue uh, installation. Right, the first guiding principle. So let's go to the uh, GNOME Software Center. Now that flat the flat hub repositories is available to us. Uh, let's check the uh, repositories that are available. So flat pack is already included from the Fedora registry. Uh, but we just added the uh, flathub.org uh, selection just now with the uh, remote add. And of course, it's got the usual uh, OS3 layering capable RPM sources such as RPM Fusion, Copper, etc., etc. So you can install, for example, from here the official Google Chrome uh, browser or the non free NVIDIA drivers or the Steam game uh, launch uh, system. I've tested all this, it works great on my equipment. Can't say enough good things about Silverblue. Okay, so uh, from FlatHub, let's install some packages. First things first, um, the extension manager, which I find is very good. Ex GNOME extensions are already installed, right? Um, uh, with Silverblue, but we, I like the extension manager. So help me later. So let's install that. There we go. And um, since I'm setting up the Silverblue system exactly the way I have it uh, for my production machine that I'm using to record this video with today, I'll install OBS Studio. And then once that's done, I will also install, because I constantly use KDN Live, a great video editor. Use it to install, uh, to um, edit videos all the time for YouTube. Next, um, I like always to have my LibreOffice uh, for every workstation I have. So let's install that. And it's done. Okay, we've got our basic uh, installations here of uh, flat packs from flathub.org. So how about um, the Devel tools or um, that I mentioned earlier, some utils that I use very seldom. Uh, I don't wanna mess up the image too much um, by layering if I can help it. So toolbox to the rescue. So um, toolbox container management is included in uh, Silverblue. So I just typed toolbox create. Let uh, the uh, toolbox um, container pull, get pulled from the registry, Fedora project registry. And then we can just enter the uh, container with toolbox enter. And you can tell um, you can install and run all your tools. 
and you can create toolboxes to your heart's content. You know you're inside a toolbox with this purple dot here, at least it's purple on my screen. So that's a good reminder, you're currently in the toolbox. So what you can do is you can um, check the os-release file. As you can see, we are in, so it's a separate Etsy, right? So we're version 36, Fedora 36, basically a Fedora 36 complete container that we can use for our standard non-silver blue operations. For example, we have DNF again, so we can do, do a sudo DNF upgrade to make sure our container is up to date. We'll let that do it. A whole bunch of updates here, about 60 packages to upgrade and one additional package to install. So we'll let it do that. And it's done. So there it is. Um, so let's clear the uh, terminal. And uh, let's install a rarely used utility such as uh, gnome-tweaks, sudo dnf install gnome-tweaks. Again, just run once, basically. Run it once, configure the system as you see fit, and you should be done like indefinitely, right? So just run once, so it's perfect for a container. So let's install it, because I do definitely like to uh, like my certain tweaks with my GNOME environment. Let it install everything. So a whole bunch of hundreds of uh, dependencies it pulls in. Again, you can install stuff like this without messing up your main operating system because it's in the container. You can wipe out the container and all this is gone. So you, you can't really screw up your system this way. It's a great way of using containers, using toolbox. So GNOME tweaks. Yes, it needs a restart because we didn't upgrade of the uh, container. Extension has moved, as you saw earlier. It's already installed from Flathub. So we can ignore this message. Silver blue is already correctly set up. So what I'd like to do is go into appearance here and for legacy applications, I'd like to match with my Adwaita Dark theme, the non-GTK4 applications under fonts. Um, these look okay. You guys can read everything, right? Under window title bars, I like my maximize minimize buttons. I'm old fashioned this way. Um, yeah, under Windows, you can uh, adjust focus, etc., etc. The usual GNOME Tweaks app. Good. So I close it now. I'll probably never open it again. At least not for this installation. So, yeah. Uh, as you can see, um, the home directory is shared between the uh, host system and the container. So I got my three principles, I uh, misspelled, from earlier. That's still there. So they remove this uh, file. That's where our three guiding principles are stored. Um, so let me touch um, a test file. Let's touch uh, container.txt. So I just created a text file called container. And what I want to do is show you guys. So there it is, right? So I want to show you guys. Uh, no, a new tab still in, the, still in that container. Um, let me show you from the host system that the home directory is shared. Let me futz around here. Let me create a new window. Yeah, okay. So I'm at the host terminal here, and there is container.txt. So everything you operate on in your container, in your home directory, carries over to um, the host home directory, your, your home directory. So that's perfect. So if you're doing software development, et cetera, et cetera, um, this is an ideal setup where you can experiment to your heart's content and not have to worry about messing up your system. And even if you do, you can always roll back very easily. So let's close these terminals. It's the power of silver blue. I'm just so much in love here. Let's go to the extension manager and install some of my most favorite GNOME extensions. It's a great little proggy. Let me close what's new here. Let me go to um, 
browse, let me install user themes. Never know if you'd like to theme something. Extension list is always handy as a reference of what you have installed. I'll show you again in a moment. App indicator for a tray items, uh, in, uh, application indicators. Um, also like the removable drive menu. So as you can see, if I click it, we've got the uh, Fedora Silver Blue ISO um, OS tree still uh, mounted from earlier. Um, also like the uh, sound input and output device chooser. So that works pretty well. Let's see what next. Um, let me look for doc from dash. I really like this um, because uh, they'll give you kind of a semi-permanent dock down below on the bottom side of the screen. It's uh, compatible with version 40, 41, and 42. Let me install that. And uh, it's from FTHX. There's another one from FTHX. Um, probably mangled that uh, developer name. It's the no overview at uh, Startup, FTHX. I'll install that. It kind of gives me kind of a Mac-like uh, user environment because I'm used to Mac. So your tastes may be different, right? So these are all the extensions we have installed. Asterisk are new installations. And um, yeah, so let's make sure everything takes by restarting yet again. Please be, bear with me, folks. Really appreciate your patience. Okay, let's log in again. That wasn't so bad, was it? Really fast. There we go. So, um, you'll see my dock here. So what I'm gonna do is go to my extension list, select dock from dash, and just trigger it. I'll just do always show the dock. You can also configure it to auto hide uh, where you move the mouse down to re-enable it, etc, etc. You won't touch that today. Uh, I don't want to make this video too long. Uh, let me populate the dock with some of my most used apps. So we've got Terminal we use all the time, OBS Studio for screen recording, KDN Live for video editing. Let's see, also settings I use quite a bit. I like to have it there just in case, you know, more the merrier. All right. So there's a nice dock. Let's uh, uh, open the terminal here. Let me move this over to the left side of the screen. Make it a bigger font, a little bit longer. Let me launch Firefox. And, uh, let, me, let me go to um, the third uh, guiding principle, which is an enabling more repositories for your RPM OS tree layer packages. So I'm going to yeah, enable the full RPM Fusion repositories, not just the uh, choice ones that Silverblue ships with. So they've got the Silverblue instructions here and rpmfusion.org. Uh, just copy paste. Very easy. And uh, that way we have a nice selection of repositories for our layered packages. And you want to minimize this. You, you just need these packages for essential system services and um, you know functions that need to be always available when you boot. Um, so yeah, okay. So we'll demonstrate an example of that shortly. System CTL reboot. You guys are used to this by now, right? So let's reboot. And uh, everything's so snappy and fast with. Uh, uh, silver blue. I just love the system. Did I say already I love it? I love it. Can't say it often enough. 
So let me uh, open up a terminal and uh, make this full screen. Yeah, the dock is down there still. Um, you can set that to auto hide if you want to. Uh, not cat. I want to check the uh, process proc info processor info. So you can see we're running authentic AMD Ryzen 9 5900HX. A nice little chip. Let me clear the screen. Uh, what I want to do is check if we have virtualization enabled. So cat proc CPU info, we'll grep it to, or egrep rather. Um, uh, we'll look for VMX or SVM flags, and we have SVM. So that's the uh, AMD virtualization capability flag. So we're ready to go with um, kernel virtual machines. This is already a virtual machine, but uh, one of the power of uh, kernel virtual machines is you can uh, virtualize a virtual machine. So as you can see, the modules are already loaded for uh, AMD. The kernel VM work, uh, modules. So um, let's do an example with uh, layering. Let's install virtual virt manager KVM and QEMU and friends. So we'll do rpm os tree install, bridge utils, libvirt, vert install, QEMU KVM for the Linux kernel hypervisor. Uh, libvirt dash devel vert dash top make everything in this layer that we need uh, lib guest file system dash tools and of course the guest fs dash tools And for EFI firmware that I use for my virtual machines, the uh, EDK2-OVMF or Tiano Core uh, EFI and vert-manager. And let's check. I don't see any typos for change. That is good. I am relieved. I'll just hit enter and let all these packages install as a layer over the OS tree image. Uh, let me make this not full screen so we don't have the uh, dock walking all over it. Again, this is easily fixable. All right, of course, it asks, you guessed it, for a reboot. Let's do it. So all the packages and dependencies have been installed for vert-manager and friends. Okay. So we can just log in. So even really system close to system services and software you can use with uh, Silverblue. So let's just demonstrate it. So I'm just gonna move the virt virt manager launcher here, virtual machine manager. And um, we need to enable the uh, libvirt uh, service. So um, we can do that by typing systemctl enable. This is why the last reboot was necessary because otherwise it's just in RAM and you can't have a service to enable. So enable now libvirt-d. And there we go, it creates a bunch of symlinks and starts libvirt-d, the daemon, immediately. So let's check that with the status. As you can see, we've got active libvirt-d sockets and uh, networking, DHCP, service running, name server, yep, DNS mask, everything is running. Good, but we're not quite done yet. And this is a little tricky with Silverblue because the user passwords and groups are immutable. So let me explain. I'm currently a member of my own group, Steven, and group Wheel, so I can sudo, right? But I also want to add myself to a libvirt group in order to launch a vert manager without having to type my the root password all the time. So, become root, 
What I want to do is I want to extract with grep dash capital E in single quotes caret um, libvert uh, colon uh, close single quote from user lib group. Remember, user is immutable, is read only, so I can't modify that. I can't. So I want to write that to slash Etsy slash group which is the layered group file that you can configure to your heart's content. So once that's done, let me, sh let me show you here what I mean. So cat user lib group, that's the entire immutable atomic silver blue systems group file, right? All the groups are there, including libvert that I just installed via a layer. So what I'll do is, uh, what I just did with the, uh, the command is to layer the libvert group onto Etsy group. So now libvert exists and can be configured. So I can add myself to it with user mod dash A capital G libvert Steven. And it's that simple. So now if I do a cat uh, slash Etsy slash group, you can see I've added myself to libvert. Perfect just like I was if I were on regular Fedora 36 workstation. Okay, so let me close the terminal here and let me launch Virtual Machine Manager. As you can see, it connects to the Virtual Machine uh, KVM QEMU um, host service. And here you can go and create your new VM. Just uh, download an ISO, install it, and you've got your virtual machines on your silver blue box, just as if you were on workstation. This is pretty much how I set up my desktop workstation. It's been running great for days, and I've since fallen in love with it. In fact, I've used this silver blue setup to create the video you're watching right now. If you have a spare computer or VM and you haven't had the chance to try Silverblue yet, maybe this video will convince you. Thanks so much for watching, and please consider liking and subscribing to help this channel with the YouTube algorithm. I really appreciate it. Until next time, take care.